All right, let's get this show on the road. Welcome back, everybody, to the E-Hunter Podcast. Uh, back again with my uh, my co-host, Seth. Seth, you, are you there? I am. I am indeed here. Oh, my goodness. You sound fantastic, everybody. <laughs> Seth has a, a new mic, and he sounds amazing. I guess. Well, I'll leave it up to Taryn. <laughs> uh, no, it's a good. It sounds great. You, Sounds wonderful. So <laughs> awesome. Well, excited to be back again with you guys today to, to do this podcast. Um, and we're going to actually share some more stories uh, with you all today. So hope you guys are enjoying these. It sounds like everybody is. And uh, we're definitely enjoying uh, talking about these things and sharing some fun memories and uh, tips and tactics and tricks and really enjoying these podcasts. So hopefully you guys are as well. And just, you know, as always, if you guys have. Um, items that you guys want us to talk about, uh, reach out to us. You can reach out to us on social media, email, whatever. Um, and just a little plug, uh, we do have some cool podcasts coming up. I know that uh, the baiting laws in Utah is a big hot topic right now. Uh, we're going to have Wyatt Buback back on the podcast. He's done a podcast with me in the past. And uh, I'll have him back on to share kind of the nitty-gritty details about the, the baiting laws in Utah. So stay tuned for that. And uh, a couple other cool ones coming up as well. If you guys have been on the website lately, you've seen some pretty neat articles. And um, we're going to try and get some some uh, podcasts done about them, get you guys some more details. If you haven't been on the website, make sure and check it out, ehunter.com. Um, we're posting new articles every single day, whether it's news, whether it's um, how-tos, product reviews, lots of stuff. Also check out our YouTube page. Um, got a lot of stuff on that and trying to do more there as well so excited about what's going on right now we got some good things going on don't we Seth we do we do we're we're like say we're creating content or finding content every day to bring it to you guys to try to be that uh, online source yep definitely couldn't do without vortex optics they support everything that we do here at eHunter also this uh, month on the podcast uh, grateful to have um Grim Reaper is as one of the sponsors for the podcast and appreciate them. And so we, we couldn't do this and couldn't make this possible for you all if, if we didn't have them. Um, we do have a Patreon page, guys. Make sure and check that out. If you guys are willing and interested in supporting us that way, we would love to have you all as patrons. Um, we got some cool things that we could do as patrons. So check us out on Patreon. It's just under eHunter. You can find us pretty easily on there. So, all right. Well, that's enough of the, the laundry list stuff. Let's move on with uh, the actual podcast and uh, jump into what we want to talk about tonight. So what we want to share with you guys is some of the uh, some stories about some old school bucks. And if you guys have been on the website, you guys have seen some pretty dang cool stories about different uh, uh animals, uh, mule deer bucks that grandparents have taken, dads have taken, um, and there's some, some monsters on there. So we're going to kind of share some of those stories with you tonight. And, and actually, Seth, I'm going to kick it over to you if you want to start us off and get us going on one of the, the cool stories that you have. Sure. So um, I have actually never seen the the deer that I'm going to tell a story about. I've, I've seen pictures of it. I've never actually laid eyes on of it, on to it. Um, so my great, great grandfather, uh, was, his, his name was William Everett Mitchell. And he actually ran a jewelry store in downtown Provo, uh, in the thirties and forties. Um, and my family, for as long as I can remember, you know, my, my great grandfather, not so much my great great, um, he always loved to go to Strawberry Reservoir, Schofield Reservoir, and Joe's Valley. Those were the three places that were his favorite places on earth. Um, and I had not realized this until a little later that he had uh, gained his love of those areas from his father, who we were talking about, which was William. Um, so in the fall of 1941, before the U.S. had joined World War II, um, he and his wife drove up to Schofield to fish for the day, which priorities, it's the deer hunt and you're fishing, but I'm, I'm not going to judge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they had fished the morning, and 
on the way home, they decided to pull over at uh, the turn off at Sheep Creek, which if anybody's hunted the Wasatch or mm-hmm. the central part of Utah, they know where Sheep Creek is. Um, and they drove up the road there uh, for about uh, two or three miles and then pulled over to have lunch. Um, while they were having lunch in the car, my great 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 grandmother um, noticed this deer moving through the flat and started, you know, grabbing great great grandpa's arm and, and yelling at him, That's a that's a great big buck, that's a great big buck. Um, so he had to fish the gun out of the back seat and load the gun. Um, it wasn't loaded, and so as he was loading shells into the gun, he jammed it with a loose change (laughs) and had to try to clear it while this big buck moved through the sagebrush flat um he finally got the gun unjammed and on the first shot uh from everything i have heard from stories and actually found a news article about the deer um he shot about two and a half inches off the farthest widest point of the deer's oh, antlers. No way. And I don't know if it dumbfounded the buck or what, but it it, it stood there. Um, and on the second shot, he dropped it. Um, and then on the third shot, it, uh, it tried to get up and he, he finished it for good on the third shot. Um, but anyways, um, once they had had shot in it it was such an ugly i mean i'll share some pictures of him that i've had through the family and then the news article picture he's such an ugly thing um <laughs> so if he wouldn't have shot at the time if he wouldn't have shot that two inches of of antler off they assume that this buck would have been the widest deer taken ever at the time oh, wow. so even with that piece missing the buck was 47 and a half inches wide. Um, and so he, he uh, had it, you know, measured because it was so close to a record at the time. Um, and they had, you know, a bunch of people come in from all over. People came over from Denver to look at it to, to try to certify if it was the world record, quote unquote, for the widest deer mm-hmm. taken. Um, and unfortunately it wasn't, it actually tied another buck that was supposedly taken in, in Colorado, um, at some point. Um, but anyways, um, the, the saddest part about all this is, um, he actually kept the antlers, you know, a lot of those bucks back then got taken to big buck contests and then the, the people that ran the big buck contest would keep the head and never give it back. Mm -hmm. Um. So he actually kept the head for for years and years, and when he passed, his family took a lot of stuff to the storage unit, and they weren't thinking anything of it. And supposedly the the, the family story is that they they put the head in front of the storage unit door with a bunch of other stuff and left to go get more stuff. And when they got back, everything was there but the head. Um, so we as a family have no idea where this head ever went to. <laughs> wow. Um, so like I say, all I have ever seen of it is the stories from my family, uh, the newspaper clippings, and then uh, a family picture of it. Um, and of course, black and white, not, not the greatest pictures. Um, <laughs> I, I would love nothing more than to, to be able to see it uh, in person, but I'm sure it's, who knows where it is at this point, if right. it even is still around. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny cause, uh, because of the size of it, he, they did a news article on it and it's funny. There was a, a couple quotes he had in the news article, um, about shooting the, the antler off. <laughs> it just says, uh, this is the quote. I'm going to scour that 40 acres of sagebrush where I shot the deer and see if I can't find the missing piece. <laughs> <laughs> and it's then, like looking at it for a needle in a haystack, right. literally. And so then in the second part of the other quote, he just said, I've been hunting deer for many, many years, uh, and it's hard to believe 
believe that this one buck might actually be a record breaker. Um, but but yeah, I, I would have loved to have seen it. Um, and and uh, unfortunately, it uh, it got picked up, and and uh, I don't know if we'll ever find it. Um, and then, um, sorry, I don't know what is going on. Goodness gracious! <laughs> it's you're it's, a uh, you're a popular dude over there. It's uh. Someone sending us messages on e Hunter. See, we're 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 popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. He's uh he's going crazy over there. He is. We're getting let, all. Let, let's give a shout a shout out on the <laughs> podcast right here in the middle. Ben Cole, man. So if you guys don't know Ben Cole, um, he's been a staff member for us at e Hunter for uh for quite a while. Um, hardcore duck hunter and and really bird hunter in general, but um. Uh, actually, we posted a, a picture of his on on the page today, and so that's probably what uh, uh, started, excited. you know, made him start sending <laughs> all these pictures. But hey, dude, Ben, keep it coming. This is awesome. So, it is good stuff. <laughs> anyways, hey, that's you guys yeah. got to know. These are raw podcasts, so that's you know, right. We're just gonna give I, it to you how it is. So this is what I get for. I, I didn't take Taryn's advice. I didn't turn off my phone. <laughs> yeah, I oh I have learned. You you got to turn off all the other sounds. You know that's oh. even Joe Rogan doesn't tell his people to do that. I laugh when all you know in the middle of Joe Rogan's podcast and you hear people's phones beeping in the background, oh, so. beeping and ringing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so picking up. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, uh, I've never got to see the head. I uh, I talked to a taxidermist one time about seeing if he could. Uh, make a recreation out of pictures and he just kind of chuckled and said that would be extremely expensive and extremely difficult to not have something to, to go off of. Yeah, that would. Um, but yeah, it was a sad deal. All, all started on a, a fishing trip and uh, ended up uh, with a, just an amazing old school buck. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll post some pictures probably tomorrow or, or uh, when this podcast goes live and uh guys can see the pictures and maybe I'll leave a clipping of the the news article about it so sweet that's a cool story man that's, it sucks when you haven't seen it um you know and you actually don't get to put your hands on it so i and actually the the story that I'm going to share is, is similar so the the story that I'm going to share it, it's pretty popular on our website and our social media you guys if you guys have been following e hunter for quite some time you know very well about the the big mule deer that my grandpa shot, but I wanted to kind of share that story today. It's funny because, um, so my grandpa Truman, he, he shot several large animals. I mean, see, I, I feel like all the guys back in the fifties and sixties just shot some monsters. I, you know, that's just kind of was normal for them back then. Um, and, and some of the other ones that he has, I've actually been able to, to hold. Um, in fact, I ha my brother has one, that we had, we have mounted, and it's actually hanging in his house right now. You're all right, Seth. You're, you're like falling over over there. No, uh, <laughs> sorry. I I had it's a raw podcast. As soon as I turned my phone off, my wife's work setup phone started going crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Good, gre good grief. Okay. <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, so like I said, we, we've got that one. It's a nice one. It's a, an eight by five, about 36 inches wide, beautiful, beautiful mule deer. Um, I'll try to post some pictures of it, but uh, really cool eye guards too. I think that's one of my favorite things about it because his and eye guards, meaning like he's got several on each side. It's, it's such a cool, cool buck. Um, but the reason I want to share this other story is because like I said, we do have an article up on it on the, on our website and we've posted about it on social media and, um, everybody have, has loved it, and the cool thing about this one is um, I have his story recorded um, in his, you know, in his as he's sharing the story in, in MP3 form. Uh, maybe someday I'll put that on a podcast and, and release it. Uh, it's kind of special to me because uh, he's been gone for a long time now. He he died when I was eight years old, and um, I, I I look up to the guy. I mean, the guy is. Uh, 
everything that I've always wanted to be, um, even a, a really good golfer. And I've, <laughs> I, I've picked up golfing recently, and I'm not a really good golfer, but this guy was a, the stud of studs. So, uh, But listening to him tell the story of this big mule deer is, is amazing. So this mule deer was, it was 44 inches wide, so not quite as big as yours, Seth, but uh, just still a, a monster. And um, I'm not going to go through the whole uh, story because, like I said, it's on uh, up on the website, and you guys can go and, and check that out. It's under the art, the title "44-inch Utah Mule Deer." Um, but kind of a funny story. They're they're out hunt. He's out hunting with his uh, his brothers and a and a friend, and um, basically he he kind of walked off on his own and uh, saw this this deer walking uh, across the hillside there, and. Um, he uh obviously he's like holy crap that's a that's a big old buck i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna be taking that so he 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 shot it and um he uh he hit it and he he watched it walk over the mountain he's like oh crap you know this 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 has got to be the biggest mule deer i've ever seen in my life and he he watches it walk over the mountain he's like i know i i feel like i hit it and he's shooting this old 270 which we all you know in our past podcast if you guys haven't talked about the the caliber podcast you guys know the 270s are pretty worthless but <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding Seth. hey uh, you're gonna have my family on you man oh crap <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm kidding if he would have been shooting a seven mag that thing would have dropped where it was at but <laughs> no he um yeah, so it took off, and he, he, you know, he talks about, you know, he's just sitting there cussing himself that he had had missed, and uh, or he thought he, he could have missed. Anyways, he he went over there and he tracks it for quite a ways. I think he says like about four hundred yards, and um, follows the the tracks down the over this hill and and down the other side. And when he got over the hill after he, where he kind of thought it went over, um, the deer kind of kind of took off and went to the bottom of the draw in front of him. And um, it went about 200 yards away, and and uh, then he was able to to shoot it, um, knock it down, and and ended up going and, and getting it. But he he said when he walked up to it, um, he he just couldn't believe it. In fact, he took his rifle and put it between the antlers, and was just blown away that his rifle fit between the antlers. You know, it was it was that wide, mm. and so he he got it kind of you know taken care of there and and started headed back for camp. You know, back in the day he didn't hop on his razor. He he walked his his happy rear end back to camp, <laughs> and uh, when he got back to camp, his brother says, you know, was that you or did you hear that those guys over there doing all that shooting? And and Mel's like, yeah, that was that was me. And they're like, oh, did you well, did you get one? He's like, yeah, I I, I shot one, and. Um, of course, the first question that his brother's going to ask is, well, how big was it? And my grandpa um, said, well, it, it's a pretty good-sized buck. And then he told him a story about, or told him how he put the the rifle down in between its antlers and said, my rifle can fit in between the antlers. And he said his brother stood up and said, well, good hell, let's go see this thing. <laughs> so so they took off to go see it. And when they walked up to it, his friend, his friend was from California, his, his friend walks up there and and uh, kind of freaks out a little bit. And he's like, "Oh hell, you shot a you shot an elk!" And he took <laughs> off running, thinking that he'd shot an elk. And uh, no, it was just a, a big freaking deer. So mm-hmm. uh, interesting story. Go guys, go on and you guys can read that article. But I want to tell you a little bit more about it, kind of after the fact. So similar, like I said, I haven't I have not seen this deer in person. Um, my grandpa sold the mount to this deer. Uh, because his the family needed some money, him and his wife, and you know little kids needed some money, and so he sold them out to a guy. Because um, it kind of got popular, it won the Gold Nugget Big Buck contest back in the day, and so it was a pretty popular buck, and so everybody knew about the buck. In fact, it, if I remember right, it some guy had tried to steal it at one time, and yep. anyways, sold it, and and we have since tracked it down myself, my cousins, and my, and my uncles. And have reached out to the guy that owns the the mount and have offered him a good sum of money, more than we should ever have to pay for a a, a mule deer mount, I mean, even of this caliber. But we wanted to pay that much because of the sentimental value that my family has for this this big mule deer. Um, and the guy just says, "I don't care what amount of money you you come at me with, I'm not going to sell it." Mm. So it, it, it's heartbreaking. It's sitting down in California as we speak on a guy's wall. 
um, that has, is not related to my grandpa at all. He just loves big animals, and it's something cool that he had bought and hung in his house. And, you know, he, he has been willing. He says, if you guys want to come get it and make replicas, I'd be okay with that. Um, you'd have to obviously come down and get it yourselves and haul it back and do everything and then, you know, bring it back. I'd probably need some collateral while you are <laughs> while you have it. Um right. But he he's been cool about that, but he's he will not sell it to us. So pretty sad deal that we can't get our hands on it and and make it ours. Maybe at some point he'll do it, but um, as of right now, it's it's sitting in California, and uh, I wish it was in Utah where we could could see it. But it's such a cool buck. Again, go to the to their website, look up forty four inch. It's forty four. Um, the two lines for like quotes, and then Utah mule deer, you'll be able to find it. Um, really, really cool book. There's a few pictures of it up on that that article. So, pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how many of those stories happen. You know what I mean? Like, the the big bug contests were were cool, and, and selling them for money was was needed at times. But it's amazing how many you hear where guys are younger guys now are trying to bring back a family heir- heirloom, and they just either can't find them or when they do find them the guy's like nope it's mine now <laughs> see i've never understood like if it's in fact i i've been traveling this week with a a, guy, a friend of mine that i work with and, and he asked me not even knowing about this story but about a different story he's like do hunters hang up like antlers or mounts from other hunters and i'm like no i i wouldn't you no know, no offense seth i wouldn't hang up a, a deer of yours in in my front right. room it's just Right. That's not cool. I mean, my grandpa's, yes, absolutely. I'll I'll hang his up. But some other random hunter or some person I don't even know, no way. Right. I wouldn't do that. Right. So it's kind of odd that, uh, that yeah, he's like, that way. I could see if it was like some really unique sheds that you found. Or yeah. Oh, even, yeah. Or even like a, a deer, like say a deer you've had a ton of history with that nobody ever killed or something. Mm-hmm. If somebody had a set of sheds and you wanted like a replica or something. Right. You know, okay, but but. Yeah, to me, to take something that's like, yep, some dude I don't know, have no idea who it is. Like, it'd be different if it was, like, your family friend or something, but but a guy you have no idea of and just to hang it on the wall is, is very strange to me. Yeah, I, I've, I've had a hard time with it. And, and, again, we've offered a lot of money for it, to, and to not take that amount of money for it, I mean, take the money and run, dude. I mean, we're getting right. screwed in the deal, but... <laughs> But it's worth it. Again, it's the it's more the sentimental value right. than it is the actual amount. It's just it's it's what that deer is, and you know. Yeah. So, if he do, never does it, I will probably go get it and make replicas of it, just so that I have that of his and have that memorabilia. But it, it still would be different if I had the real thing. And that's and that's the way I am with my great great grandpa's. If if a guy ever came to me and like, look, I don't know how I got it. Even if even if his family stole it, I really don't care. Like. You know what I mean from the from the storage unit or whatever. Yeah. Yep. If he, if he just came to me and was like you can make replicas of it, I'd do it in a heartbeat just because like if he wouldn't sell me the actual head and he would just like you can make replicas, I would do it just because it's something I've wanted for as long as I've seen this deer. Mhm. So, yeah. What other stories you got, Seth? Uh, so the only other one I had, so uh my step grandfather, who has since passed, um, it's kind of funny. So, so the other buck I talked about was shot in Sheep Creek, and this buck that I'm going to tell a story about um, was taken 30 years apart, almost, and only like 30 miles away. So it was taken uh, in what we've always known as White River, which is also on the Wasatch just you know a few miles up that main highway um so it was the early 60s um and my step grandfather and his brother uh hopped in the willies jeep and went up to white river to deer hunt and it had snowed um and i really wish they didn't take any pictures or anything at the time um i really wish they would have but uh they shot two really nice bucks. So, anyways, they uh, they're driving the the willies along, and they get to some low mahoganies, and they could see quite a few deer moving through there. Um, so, 
So my step grandpa Ted says, well, I'll walk across the mahoganies and see if I can push anything out. And uh, you wait down by the willies and I'll push them toward you. And that way you can pick me up. I'm like, okay, no problem. So uh, he's walking along and two really nice bucks hop out and take off running. Um, and the bigger of the two, he shoots. I think he hit it two or three times. It's been a long time since I've heard him tell the story. Um, and it made it down into the flat. And it crashed. And the buck that was running with it ran right towards his brother. And his brother shot it right out the right off the hood of the willies or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it fell down. And they, they loaded them both in the Jeep. And loaded them up and, and shut the doors. And just as they started the Jeep, the the buck that the brother had shot stood up in the back of the willies and jumped out of the willies and tried to run away. Gosh. <laughs> and so they both shot it again <laughs> and got it, um, loaded it back in the willies. And so I've never seen the other buck in this story. Uh, the brother lives in... Uh, well, did live. I think he lived up north, maybe in Idaho. I can't remember now. Um, never seen that buck, but uh, my grandpa Ted always said it was a nice buck, but this one was bigger. Um, and back then, it's kind of like you said, there was just a lot of guys that shot nice deer back then. It seemed like uh, it wasn't really any big deal, so they, they didn't mount it or anything. Um, and my grandpa took the head and cut cut the skull plate off, wrapped it in leather, and just hung it at the cabin for years and years and years. Um, and I'd go up to the cabin in Clear Creek, which we talked about in the uh, elk hunting stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'd look at that buck, and I'd be like, man, that's a big deer to not have a, you know, a shoulder mount or anything on it. And I uh, I guess my step-uncle, his son, kind of had the same feeling, because uh, back in like 08 or 09, he contacted a, a a taxidermist and found a hide for it and, and got a shoulder mount on it. Um, but while we were doing that, it got to stay at my house for a few weeks um, once it was finished until my uncle could come pick it up. Um, and so I measured it and scored it and stuff. And so it, it scores at uh, 203. Nice. It's just a really, really nice buck. I mean, few kickers, but mostly just a big four point. Um, and I just thought it was so funny that those two bucks were basically shot in the same basic area, 30 years apart. Wow. Um, and, and I like to say, it's kind of like you said, when you, you have an MP3 of your grandpa telling the story, I really, really wish I would have someone at the time before he passed recorded that story. Cause to hear him tell it, it was so much funner and, and funnier to hear, you know, the, the emotion of, shooting a big buck and then loading them both in the truck or the willies and then watching the deer jump out of the back of the willies and run off and, and having to shoot it again. And it was a, it was a really good story to, to hear. So I, <laughs> I really wish we would have recorded it, but, uh, Oh man. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, I've, I've said that about a lot of things like, you know, with this podcasting equipment that we have, we really need to sit down with, grandparents you know like my grandma you know not even about hunting but my grandma is you know 94 years old and talk to her about different things you know that she's gone through in her life you know being 94 she's seen you know technology right. advancements and you know, sicknesses and all sorts of different things that she you know go throughout her life and it'd be interesting to get her stories but you know to sit down with some of our grandparents and parents and you know tell me the story about this buck and you know just right. just to have that in their own words i mean we're telling these stories today but we're you know we're not even really doing it justice for what right. they could do you know they could go in so much detail and you know and i guess similar with us we need to tell our kids those stories and record it so that we can share the emotions of our our hunts you know on this right. ride that i've been going on this week through wyoming um you know just like i said this guy that i've been talking to has asked me to tell him stories you know, I told him a story about last year's elk hunt with the llamas, and, you know, he, he was just digging. He's not a hunter, but he was just digging the stories because it's it's so entertaining. And like you said, the emotion that comes out as you share the stories is is amazing. So Right, and it's, you know, it's, it's like you say, it's sad 
to an extent of how many are lost, you know, how many stories end up lost. Uh, I mean, you're, you're from Utah. I'm sure you've stopped at the Cove Ford gas station. I stopped there and, just two days ago. And, and you look at the size of them, those deer, and the, and you know the guy that owns that gas station didn't shoot those deer. Them are all from all over Utah, mm-hmm. and, and nobody knows those stories of Which any is... one of those deer, probably. Which really does those deer a disservice, those animals, all those animals a disservice, because, man, it's, don't get me wrong, it's cool to see big animals hanging on the wall. Like, I love going to Cabela's and seeing all the mounts on the wall, but how the stories, the stories behind the hunt is, is even that much better, you know? It is, it really is. Yeah, we'll take the time, guys, and, and share these stories, not our stories, but your stories with the people that you know, whether it's your kids, your grandkids, whatever, you know, that those are special, that's, you know, that's the thing about hunting, is it makes it, that makes it so special, is it's not just about harvesting an animal and putting that animal in your freezer, which is a great part of it, don't get me wrong, but, you know, the, the life experiences, the things you're able to share together with your family and friends, the, the memories that live on, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing, and so hopefully you guys were able to enjoy these stories that we shared with you tonight. We'll, we're going to share more stories as as it goes on. We've got some some fun stuff planned for you guys, and uh, should share, be able to share some pretty cool stuff with you. So, Seth, before we we wrap things up, anything new on uh, the e hunter front that we want to share with everybody? Um, so if you haven't checked out the website in the last little while. Um, there's, there's tons of stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, tons of stuff go, going up on there, uh, from, from like, like Karen said in the beginning, from news to, to, uh, just, just stories about big animals. We've got a, a legends of the past section that's, we've had some animals added to that. Um, sadly there was another a fatal grizzly attack up in Montana again. Um, I, we've covered that one. There's, there's a good article there. You can read about what took place there. Um, look like a, looks like a grizzly came right into someone's camp multiple times. They tried to scare it away, and then late in, in the in the middle of the night, it it got into the lady's tent and drug her out of it. Um, really sad deal. Um, we've got articles discussing wildlife management. We've got you know pronghorn management, uh, conservation stamps in Wyoming. Just a bunch of stuff on the website you guys can read right now that uh, will give you a little more information into hunting news and and tactics and and all sorts of different things yep definitely i got an article going up tomorrow about the new change to wyoming um hunting age they're lowering the hunting age so 11 year olds if you're 11 this year um but but turning 12 before the end of the year you can hunt big game this year so lots of lots of cool stuff um, really keep yourself up to date with what's going on in the world of hunting and, and really outdoors in general. So make sure you guys are uh, checking that that website daily, really. Um, you'll you'll find a lot of uh, good information on there. And we're growing. We're, we're getting a lot of people from not just the U.S., but all over the world um, hitting, the, hitting the website. So um, it's getting out there, but please share it with everybody. Uh, that you know if, if there's articles you're like oh yeah I know somebody that would enjoy this article make sure and share it with them um, that's really what helps helps us grow so well cool Seth well we'll we'll wrap it up but uh, appreciate everybody's support for uh, the website for the podcast for everything that we're doing please make sure that you like subscribe share all that fun stuff reach out if you guys have any questions or want us to cover anything specific and uh, we appreciate you guys uh, for everything, all the support that you give to us. Also, one other quick thing. There, we have some new apparel that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Seth, when do you think we're going to be able to get that out for everybody? Um, I am not certain, but we have an order set to go, and I think you guys will really like the apparel once it comes in. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I'm sorry, the evil laugh came out there because it's yes. we got a pretty cool... Uh, thing coming out so I'm excited to introduce that to you guys I, I'm sure you guys will love it <laughs> yep I think it'll be a really good one I think people will get a, a really good uh, kick out of it and then really enjoy it so yeah for sure cool all right guys we'll appreciate you um, again reach out if you have any questions and thank you for listening see you guys see ya